Praise the Lord. Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning to you guys. We are in a brand new Bible study, a brand new day. I'm excited because I got some uh, this thing set up a little better. And so now we can begin to study the Bible once again. So welcome. I got a brand new website that I've, I'm working on. You can go check it out and see the progress of it. It's called it's on terrylong.net. Terrylong.net will take you to terrylong.live or terrylong.net. That'll get you there. And uh, I'll be posting the notes that, of the teaching that I'm doing on there. And so you'll be able to go through the notes. I'll try to put the PowerPoints on there. I'll try to put the, uh, the notes on there so you can see what we're doing. And we're going to start a brand new study today. Uh, it took me a while again to get this all set up. So we got a brand new study today, and the study is on the Gospel of Matthew, and we'll be going just verse by verse, line by line, and kind of taking it slow, and we have a great opportunity to, to now use PowerPoint, and I'll put the notes up there for you and all that. So pretty excited. TerryLong.net. Go over there and check that out, and uh, that'd be cool. And for you on Periscope, uh, you won't be able to see the PowerPoint and stuff, so, but you can see the, the awesome light right there. But uh, it, it, go, to, go to Facebook. Hopefully it's working on Facebook right now. And uh, you'll be able to, to watch it on there. All right, let's pray. Let's get after it. Uh, we're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew. But I'm going to have you turn your Bibles as a kind of introductory to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 is where we're going to be at. So, so join me in prayer and let's get after it. Father, we love you and praise you. Lord, you're so faithful to us. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you would guide our time together as we study your word together. We love you, Jesus. We really do. We love you, Lord. We trust in you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, come on now, say it out loud. Amen and amen. All right. So, so here we are. I want to do some introductory things on this gospel presentation that we're doing. And I want to start right here. Is it that cool? All right. I'll start right here with why are we choosing these four gospels? Isn't there other books, Pastor, uh, that we could be looking at? Aren't there, are there books that we could be uh, you know, considering? How about the lost books of the Bible? How about the secret gospels? How about the Gospel of Judas? I want to talk a little bit about that, uh, about those books. Uh, but before we do that, I want you to understand, going over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I had you go over there. Look what it says. Read along with me. Look at verse 1. Oh, that you would bear with me a little folly, Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And indeed, you do bear with me, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I will betrothed to you to one husband, that I present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now listen to what he says. He says, but I fear, I fear, and his fears are justified. We'll see that in a minute. I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your mind may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. From the simplicity, the blessing that is in Christ, some of your translations will say. Look at verse 4. For if, if he who comes preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receives a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you've not accepted, you may well put up with it. In other words, you, the, the, by fears are justified is that you're accepting another Jesus. You're, you're accepting another gospel. Pastor, I thought there was only one gospel. Well, no, there is only one true gospel. It's the gospel, the good news. You know what gospel means. It's the good news of Jesus. But there's others that will come in with these documents. And again, we'll talk about them. T turn over, take a right in your Bible, go to the book of Galatians. Go to the book of Galatians. Paul speaking to the church there in Galatia. In Galatia. <laughs> it, uh, uh, yeah, Galatia. What, you know, the, the Galatian church. Um, Modern day Turkey. He says... I marvel, it's, it's early, so I'm going to stumble a little bit, all right? So it's early, and I'm still waking up, and just having my coffee, and, and jumping right in here to this. But I love this kind of stuff. So uh, listen to what he says. He says, I marvel that you are turned away so soon from him who called you to the grace of Christ. Again, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Galatians 1, verse 6. Uh, to a different gospel, a different gospel which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. There's only one gospel, but there's those that want to pervert it. But even if we 
or an angel from heaven. Hello, Utah, listen to this. Preach any other gospel to you than what we preach to you. Let him be anathema, a curse. This is one of the harshest words Paul would use. Let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what we preach, let him be anathema, accursed. And so are there more than one gospel? Well, there's false gospels out there. And, um, and he says, even if we or an angel from heaven, the angel Moroni, right? I'm not saying that to be offensive for you that are LDS, but you need to know what you believe and why you believe it. Stay with me. I'll try not to be so offensive because of my stupidity that you, that you, that you don't listen, but let's learn this together. Let's learn this together. All right, so what are these, what are these documents? Again, the secret gospel, lost but gospel of Jesus, what are these? Well, let me start with probably the most popular one is called the Gospel of Thomas, all right? The Gospel of Thomas. Now, one of the things that uh, I've done in my life is that I, I, I enjoy uh, having old Bibles, and I, when I mean old Bibles, I mean 1400s, 1500s, 1600s. Uh, and I used to have a business, this is really not that important, but I used to have a business where I'd buy old Bibles. I buy them over mostly all in the UK, all over in London area and that's in, uh, in, in, in Scotland and that, that region. And so I'd buy these old Bibles and I'd, I'd ship them. And, and long story of how I did all that, it was before internet too, by the way. So this was a, quite, a, quite a task. Sometimes I'd go over there and, and, do, and do shopping and stuff. But um, I'd buy these Bibles, I'd bring them over here into America, and then I'd have them for a while. Oh, I love these Bibles. And then I'd realize, I can't do this. We're going under financially because I've got an addiction to Bibles. It's a good addiction. We're going to have one. And so I would sell them, and I set up a website, and eBay was brand new. eBay had just come out, and I was selling these Bibles. I had these old Bibles. Uh, and so if you go to Calvary Chapel today, and I should do a, a Facebook thing on this, if you go to Calvary Chapel today, you're going to see a whole bunch of old Bibles there. You know, and you're going to see a collection. You go in the sanctuary. Uh, we're one of the best kept secrets in Utah, by the way, um, is that you go in the sanctuary and you're going to learn how we got the Bible and you're going to see some rare documents in there. If you go out in the foyer, you're going to see some cases out there and look in those cases. Look on the side of the cases because there's instruction on, on what you're looking at and you're going to see some, I mean, some, and you rip us off, you'll go to hell, right? You'll see some extremely rare Bibles that are there. All right, one of the ones that I had that came through my hands and went out the other side because I sold it uh, was a manuscript of the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas from the, from the 1500s, All right? So this Gospel of Thomas. Now, why, Pastor, should we not have the Gospel of Thomas in our Bible? Remember Dan Brown, the Da Vinci Code guy, All right? It was actually, I can say this straight up, it was, it was a book that was very entertaining to read, but was a was a historical piece of crap, all right? Um, maybe that's a little harsh to say, uh, but that's the reality of it, all right? It really was not a book it, that, that is going to give you any history. It's fun to read if you're a reader and you know how to read understandingly. Uh, but the issue is this is that Dan Brown was saying, well, the Gospel of Thomas should have been in the Bible and all that. Okay, I'm going to give that to you. By the way, the Gospel of Thomas, <coughs> excuse me, sippy cup time. The Gospel of Thomas um, was found in Egypt in, in about 1945. And so it's a, but it's, it's, it's a document that dates back to about four or 500 AD. Okay, so after the fact, Thomas didn't write it. There is a group called the Gnostics. I won't get into all the detail on this. The Gnostics that wrote it, uh, they had secret knowledge. That was their idea. They had secret knowledge. What I want to do is I want to just do this. I want to, let me put this up on the screen. I want to just read to you what the Gospel of Thomas has in it. I don't have to refute it. It refutes itself. All right? So I don't need to say, well, the Gospel, and generally this is the, this is the one document that comes out says, well, this needs to be in the Bible. Okay, well, let's take a look at it, all right? If it needs to be, oh, did you hear Tinkerbell? This needs to be in the Bible. Oh, somebody's at the front door. Okay, so this needs to be in the Bible. Uh, well, should it be in the Bible? 
All right? Well, let's just read it. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, by the way. I want to stay in the true bio, true gospel. But here's the thing is I want you to know why these books have not been added in the Bible without just, without just believing what you're hearing. All right, so let's go back over to here. Here's Gospel of Thomas. There, it's 114 secret sayings of Jesus. Secret sayings of Jesus. Let me just read a couple of them. And you can get this online. Go to, which we live in a great generation, so you can, you can watch. By the way, on Periscope, it'll help you if you go over to Facebook. Because this hopefully is live on Facebook. Uh, if it's not, I'll put it up there. Um, and so you can be watching the when I'm going over to PowerPoint. All right, so 114 secret sayings of Jesus. Here's here's just, I'm going to pick a few of them. And you again, you can read this online. Go online and read this. All right, the Gospel of Thomas. 114 secret sayings of Jesus. Here's, here's secret saying number seven. Jesus said, lucky is the lion that the human will eat so that the lion becomes human. And foul is the human that the lion will eat and the lion will become human. So if a lion, if a lion eats a person, they become human. That's a little weird, isn't it? Okay, I don't know. They want to throw one of your neighbors into a lion place, a lion cage and see if he becomes a human. All of a sudden, brrr, he morphs into a human. It just keeps getting better. The Gospel of Thomas should be in our Bible, right? The 14th secret saying of Jesus, Gospel of Thomas. Jesus said to them, if you fast, we're talking about fasting, by the way, at Calvary Chapel, you gotta come. If you fast, you will bring sin upon yourself. If you pray, you will be condemned. If you give charity, you will harm your spirit. Uh, really? Really? What's that all about? All right, that is all about, whoa, I'm trying to find, there you are, okay. Yeah, that's what is that all about? I'm gonna tell you what that's all about. That's all about blasphemy right there. All right, that little text, that's wrong. On Sunday and Wednesday, come out to the church. I'm teaching right now on fasting and I'm teaching on prayer on Wednesday night, okay? Going from John chapter five, chapter six. All right, so this is a direct contradiction to that. If you fast, you'll bring sin upon yourself. If you pray, you'll be condemned. If you give charity, you'll harm your spirit. That's blasphemy right there. That's Pull, that's that's basic bull crap, all right, bull crap, all right? Let's just look at one more. I don't need to look at very many of these. Let's look at one more. Yes, the Gospel of Thomas should be in our Bible. Uh, the last of them, okay? The, hundred, the last one, the 114 sayings of, secret sayings of Jesus, here's the last one. Simon Peter said to them, make Mary leave us, for females don't deserve life. Jesus said, look, I will guide her to make her male so that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every female, boy, this is, this, is, this is good news right here. For every female who makes herself male will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now this is way before the transgender generation. I'm not gonna be rude about that either because that's not the, the point of this. The, the point is this is, is that w Lord, Send her away. She's a female, and this is only for the guys, you know. And uh, and Jesus says, no. If she follows us, she will become male. Really? That's a little scary. All right. How about let's go to another one? Let's go to let's go to the Gospel of Peter. Well, the Gospel of Peter ought to be in there. The Gospel of Peter. All right. Well. Let's let's go over to the Gospel of Peter now. Gospel of Peter was a document found in 1880 in the coffin of a Christian monk who died in the ninth century. This is known as the Cross Gospel, and you'll see why. The Gospel of Peter, and I'm not going to do very many of these, by the way. I think this is a huge waste of time, except I want you to just get your head around why these other Gospels are not put in the God. Why are they not in there? The secret sayings of Jesus, all the all the secret Gospels or the or the lost gospels. I'm just showing you why all you got to do is don't fight it, just read them, all right? How about this? The Gospel of Peter should be in there, found in the 1800s. This should be in there, all right? But in the night in which the Lord's, the Lord's day dawned and when the soldiers were safeguarded in two by two in every watch, there was a loud voice in heaven and they saw the heavens were opened and the two males who had such radiance had come down from there and came to the sepulcher. So far, so good. Uh, now the stone, which had been th thrust against the door, having rolled by itself, okay, uh, 
went a distance off the side, and the sepulcher opened, and both the young men entered. And so the soldiers, having seen, awakened the centurion and the elders, for they too were present. The soldiers were there, the centurion were there, everybody was there, and they were all there watching the watching the tomb. And when they and they were when they were relating what they had seen, again they seen two males, excuse me, three males, who had come out from the sepulcher, with two supporting the other one. And a cross, hello, listen to this, a cross followed them. It's called the talking cross or the cross that follows. So there's a cross that's walking, following them. And the head of the two reached into heaven. So these angels, oh, their, their heads went all the way into heaven. And, and uh, but that two, excuse me, at the one being led out by the hand by them going beyond heaven. And they were hearing a voice from heaven saying, have you made proclamation to fall asleep? Did you guys make proclamation? Did you guys fall asleep? And he said, and, and obedience was heard from the cross saying, yes. In other words, the talking cross gospel. So again, should should the these gospels, uh, these other gospels, should they be in, um, in the Bible? The Gnostic gospels, the lost sayings of Jesus. By the way, these were not lost. They were thrown away in the early church. Right, so what we have is we have the four gospels. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, what I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spare you of this because this is starting to get a little tedious, and and uh, I don't want you to get bored with it. You know, I want you to, you're gonna get as much out of this as you want. So I'm gonna put in the notes terrylong.net. Go over there; it'll it'll take you over to to the live the the, the live channel. And so in there, you'll have the notes, and in those notes, you will have documents of why these four books. I want to tell you what they are because I got to quit it a little bit. I want to tell you what they are. And then we're going to we're going to fine tune our focus on the Gospel of Mark. And next time I'm going to give you specifics about the Gospel of Mark and we'll get, we'll get started in there. But I want to talk about these four Gospels. All right. So we have these, these four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptic gospels, the synoptic gospels. The synoptic means to see with one eye. The synoptic gospels is you have, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What does that mean? It's to tell one story, one story. Let me show you. As we go through these gospels, if you go to the gospel of Matthew, 48% is unique material from the other gospels. So you're gonna take Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you're gonna say, okay, where do these overlap? We're trying to tell a story of Jesus. Where do these overlap? The Gospel of Mark, 48% is unique material. As you go over to Mark's Gospel, 23% is unique material, only found in the Gospel of Mark. As you go over to the Gospel of Luke, you find 62% is unique material. But the, in the overlap, Matthew, Mark, the Synoptic Gospels, only 11% are the same story. So you have, you know, as you say they're they're all telling the same story. Only 11% of those stories are telling the story exactly, um, telling the same event. I'll tell you why that is in a minute, why they have different, different stories here. Again, this is a little bit technical, a little less preachy than normal, more teaching, but this is really good for you, all right? You need to understand why we have the different gospels, why we don't have the synoptic, why we don't have the, the lost books of the Bible. They were never lost. Uh, they were they were thrown out, and so you have Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They're only eleven percent of those gospels are overlapping. All right, hope you get what I'm trying to say. Again, this is all online. My notes are online. You can get there. That's all free. Okay. Now the Gospel of John is unique because the Gospel of John is uh, is ninety eight percent unique material. 98% unique material. So, so what you have is you have the synoptic gospels and 11% of them, all right, is, uh, is all the same, telling the same story. And I did, a, I had a blast with this. When I did the life of Christ, I told all, all four gospels. And I did this on Sunday morning at Calvary Chapel. And I did all, all four gospels. I told them as one story. And this is where a lot of this research came from is I was looking at that, okay, where do they overlap? Where am I gonna have new material and all that? And so here you have uh, the Gospel of John is 98 new material. Now, again, stay with me. I know this is tedious, but, but it's good for you, all 
right? This is good. All right, so turn over in your Bibles. Go to John's Gospel, John chapter 21. John chapter 21, all right? The last verse of the Gospel of John. It says this, John chapter 21. It says, let's get over there. John chapter 21. It says this. There are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that are written in. Now, let me say that again. Listen to this. Read it carefully. Underline it. Circle it. Highlight it. Look what it says. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. As he's concluding the gospel of John, he says, Jesus did a lot of things. He says, well, why didn't he say those secret sayings? Really? If he did, he's a fruitcake, all right? Um, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could contain the books. All right, so what we have here is we have, we have in this circle that I put on the screen, again, if you're on Facebook, go over to, are you on Periscope, go over to Facebook. All right, so what I put on the screen there is you have this, the, the life of Christ in this circle. Now, on the next screen here is this. Okay. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So in that circle now, in that circle, let me go back to the camera. In that circle, so you have this circle where you have this, this is everything that Jesus did in this circle right here, right? So Matthew, as we'll see in a minute, and I'll go through this pretty fast, I'm getting tired, all right? So it, it, I'm old, all right? I, though I look really young, and true, huh? Check that out, all right? So, so you have... Uh, I don't know how that translates. I know it translates this in Spanish. I don't know how that translated. You know, uh, probably he's El Gordo. That means beautiful, right? No. All right, so um, so here's all the life. And, sorry, just had a humorous moment there. All right, so here's all of the Jesus did in this big circle right here. All right, so Matthew is writing to a specific group. He's writing to Jewish people. So out of this thing, all this stuff that Jesus did, let me go back over to the screen here. As we, as all this that Jesus did, uh, he pulls out, this is what's going to, to minister to the people I'm trying to talk to, to, I'm trying to tell this story to. So Matthew's gospel, in fact, let me, let me do this. Let me, let me, let me do this. Okay. Go over to Matthew's gospel. He's written, he's writing to the Jews, right? He's, he's writing to the Jews. He's a tax collector. He's showing that Jesus is the Messiah. 38 times, Jesus is going to direct, he's going to quote direct references to the Old Testament. 50 times, he's going to citate, but 38 times, he's going to say, this happened and give the scripture. So what he's doing is trying to show the Jews, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. So out of this circle here, what is he doing? He's saying everything that Matthew did uh, everything Jesus did, all right, stay with me now, I got to focus, Pastor, everything that Jesus did in this life, I'm going to be trying to share this with the Jews. So this happened to fulfill this. This happened to fulfill this, all right? And so, but when you get to Mark's gospel, Mark is written to a Roman audience. Certain things about, about Mark that is not important, all right? Uh, you know, Mark is, uh, is, is, is action-packed. This happened, and this happened, and this happened. So when, when Mark is writing, he pulls out of the life of Jesus those areas that are going to deal with, uh, they're going to deal specifically with Jesus, the Son of Man, Jesus being, you know, being able to relate to a Roman. We can talk more about that, but uh, you can get my study on the Gospel of Mark while I do an introduction on this, and it's good stuff. The next one is the is the Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke, he's a medical doctor. Uh, he, he shares what Jesus felt. That's kind of cool. Uh, he's he's writing to the Greeks. So when he writes, he pulls out of this circle. He writes all those little, little minister to the Greeks, trying to tell the story of Jesus. The last one here is John. John is writing to Christians. In fact, John tells us why he's writing. Uh, in John's gospel. He's writing that those would have life, uh, you know, and so uh, he's writing to those. So when John writes, he pulls out all those things that will, will pertain to those that are following Jesus, right? And he, he tells us why he's doing that, right? So that um, 
that should be, you would believe. Um, these things are written. This is in John's Gospel, John chapter, John chapter twenty, verse uh, thirty. He says this. He says, uh, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, and he tells us why. John's Gospel tells us why. He says, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. And so he says why he's writing. And so you have this out of these gospels now, out of this, out of this life of Jesus, okay, going out of this life of Jesus, what you have is he's, these four gospel writers are telling the story and to a specific audience. Now, again, I don't want to get too crazy with this. Uh, I want to get to the gospel of Matthew, which I will do next time. All right. So I'm going to keep this kind of short today. I'm still trying to learn uh, all of the, the material here. I'm trying to learn, uh, not the material, but learn how to use all this stuff. But this is exciting. I'm really excited because what I've always wanted to do is to be able to show you the pictures, to show you when, we're, when I'm talking about Capernaum. Now I can show you Capernaum. I can. I think I can even show a little uh, video clip of Capernaum when we when we've been there, uh, or 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 Nazareth, or or uh, you know any of these other things of me of a baby, how beautiful I am when I'm a little child, you know all that stuff, and so very cool. So I'm going to close in prayer, and that was uh, you know fun today, kind of going through this uh, on. Periscope now, you guys on Periscope, I look down because you're down there. Uh, it's uh, the Periscope people. Uh, just kind of keep going to uh, my Facebook site. You can find me, Pastor Terry Long. Just Google on Facebook, uh, Terry Long, and you'll find me. Uh, there I have a fan site because I have so many fans, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Uh, it's not about that. But uh, but there I'm putting the PowerPoint. Now, now here's another way. This Actually, this may be a better way for you too and for all of us is that this should be live right now and I'll check it on terrylong.net. This you should be able to go to that website, which would be very cool because not only will you have the previous messages there, you'll also have all the notes, the PowerPoints that I show you will be there. If you want to use this, right? If you're a teacher and you want to use this, great, use it, and uh, all that will be on there. I'm trying to build this up so that you that want to use this material, and I encourage you to use it. All right, uh, take the stuff that you can glean. Lose the stupid jokes that the weirdo pastor is telling you and uh, and use this material because what I'm giving you is so small compared to the great uh, the great lesson this is. Oh, because you're so great. No, God's great. God's great. And there's so much material. When I talk about why these gospels, historically, why these gospels, I give you a whole study on that. And so it's all there. Uh, spelling is bad. Grammar is bad. That's not what it's about. Use that in your own study notes, all right? Very, very cool. So uh, let's pray and let's see what God has. Oh, it's time. Did you hear Tinkerbell again? That means somebody's at my front door. All right, that's all that means. All right. God bless you guys. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise you, Lord. And I know this was a lot of history today, Lord, but I pray that even the things that we're learning together, those things will make us stronger in you. Those things are to help us to know the word better. We love you, Jesus. We really do. We love you a lot. So Lord, help us to be faithful to you. Help us to follow you. And even today, Lord, help us to engage with you throughout this day. We love you, Jesus. We really do. Give us all your free word in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said, amen and amen. All right. God bless you guys. Again, we'll see you on. So my goal is to be on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll be on around 7.30 in the morning, Mountain Time. Okay, around 7.30. I'll be on, but most of you, the vast majority of you are watching it after the fact, right? And so that's cool. That's better anyways, because you can fast forward past my dumb remarks that I make. All right, you can just, blah, 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 blah. you can go right past it, right? And so we're going to have fun together. We're going to learn the Bible and we're going to have fun together. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Hey, we'll see you Thursday, if possible, Lord willing. And I'll see you in church on Wednesday night. We're learning to pray the Lord's Prayer. Sunday morning, fasting and prayer. Uh, I'll see you there. And that's all online too. All right, God bless you guys. Go live for Jesus.